Uh, I work a lot, for instance, in uh, cultural heritage conservation. Uh, I'm an expert witness in the investigation of the uh, Notre Dame fire that happened in Paris in 2019. And, and one of the big challenges that the firefighters faced uh, there is that you have an active timber roof burning and we don't know if the structure is going to collapse. Uh, and so that's uh, going to create a lot of uh, confusion, it creates a lot of uh, changes from a health uh, and we say life safety perspective. And this is one of the aspects that we research in the lab. Welcome to my office. My name is Augustin Gibault and I'm an assistant professor in the mechanical and aerospace engineering here at NYU Tandon. So our lab focuses on fire related issues, understanding how we can make our cities but also our, uh, I would say, landscape safer. My research focuses on a few different aspects. One of them is to understand how uh, different items burn, for instance, and what happens at a very small scale. So we just take you know, different samples of materials, different configuration, and we want to understand from an analytical perspective when we're going to see a flame appearing and when we're going to see a flame uh, extinguish. To be able to understand fire, you want to understand the fluid mechanics that's behind, you want to understand chemistry, you need to understand heat transfer as well. So there's this very dense and complex like mechanism that all overlay one on top of the other. Now today to be able to understand you know flammability or flame spread or how much you know a fire is going to release heat we have a bunch of tools at, at our disposal. Uh, one we can do experiments and that's great we collect a lot of data. We can also run a bunch of numerical models and there's a lot of techniques I use today a lot of CFD for instance so computational freeze dynamic that people use to, to create these models uh, and we see the emergence of machine learning and, and I would say that a key element of our research today is to be able to join these three elements together so that we can leverage data, leverage our understanding of physics, and also create this kind of framework where we can use the power of machine learning today to get to impactful conclusions. Uh, an experiment was conducted to understand how a large-scale fire could happen within a compartment. So you have an open room and we want to understand you know, how the fire develops and how fast it spreads. That's a critical point from you know, an evacuation procedure uh, perspective or from like a structural perspective for the fire. Uh, what we've been doing with my group is replicate the experimental results using numerical techniques. So our objective here is to combine the modeling that we've been able to do with data that has been obtained in the field and ultimately create more machine learning algorithms so we can have much faster results. We work in close ties with space agencies who are very interested to know, you know how can we get someone on the moon and get them uh, there safe. Uh, we see today a renewal of interest in the space race and, and you know, establishing a permanent uh, human population uh, on the moon. But on the moon you change the gravity and you know if you're on Earth some of the things we say is you know hot air rises. So if you have a flame or anything, the buoyant force or the fact that the uh, flame is going to go upward has a lot of impact on how things burn. Uh, what we've been doing is working a lot in an aircraft uh, that is in Europe. Uh, it's, uh, uh, nicely nicknamed the Vomit Comet because it goes up and down and creates the worst turbulence you've ever seen and that allows us to replicate for a sequence of about 20 seconds conditions of low gravity. We're interested to see how the change in gravity changes how material burn, how fast the flame spreads, what kind of pollutants are emitted as well and everything that we see today allows us to design spacecraft that are safer. In this slide for instance what you can see is an experimental rig we designed especially for this kind of test and we equipped it with a bunch of different setups so we could measure the particulate matter that is generated inside the flame. The research we are doing today, the idea is to uh, create a better world for tomorrow. Uh, we pay very regularly the price for design decisions in our cities that were taken 50 years ago, 60 years ago. So one of the things we keep in mind very actively in our group is to think that you know, 50, 60 years from now, we don't want people to curse us for decisions we're making today. Uh, when it comes to how we organize our cities, making sure that we organize them in a safe way, that the fire service has access to all the different buildings, that people can also live without thinking about fire safety. That's kind of our prime objective, to make it a feature of our cities that is as discreet as possible. At the same time, we can really try to understand how you know, long-term changes on our planet, the fact that the climate is shifting, uh, the change in our human activities as well, can have an impact on, on the fire risk. This is extremely present in the context of wildfires, for instance. Uh, if you think about what's going to happen in 40, 50, 60 years down the road, the climate can change but the vegetation is also going to adapt. And so one of the things we try to capture, and this is where we develop some physics informed machine learning model, is how vegetation is going to follow a pattern that is adequate uh, to the climate change and understand how that's going to translate ultimately into a wildfire risk. So one of the things we've done with a team of students here 
is uh, focusing on the country of Portugal, uh, understanding how this change in both climate and vegetation can produce a different effect from what we see if we only take into account the climate. And so we want to understand then where we want to focus our efforts to reduce as much as possible the risk of wildfire. Now, when we, when we cross the gap from the lab scale to, uh, I would say, the field, uh, we have to cross a lot of scales, and scales in fire are going to be a real problem. What we may see on a small piece of timber in the lab may not be valid once we like, look at how an entire building burns. And so one of the efforts we've been doing, especially in the context of heritage conservation, is to understand you know, what material properties were of critical importance uh, to understand the fire safety at the scale of a building. Once we are able to assess where the risk is, what are the kind of you know, conditions that can lead to a fire in a, in, in a historic building, for instance, then we work hand in hand with building managers and the fire department to be able to create a fire strategy that is adequate. Uh, fire safety focuses on life safety. So if we are in this building and there's a fire, the first thing we want to do is for everyone to evacuate. So on this slide, what you're seeing is a series of numerical models that we have made uh, following the investigation uh, of the Notre Dame fire. Uh, we worked with the uh, DOJ in France to be able to understand how the fire started, but also how it grew and what the consequences are for other buildings around the country. Notre Dame is the building that received the largest amount of funding from a fire safety perspective before that fire. Uh, that's a problem. If this building burns, that means a lot of them are at risk. What we conducted here is a series of experiments to try to understand how these unique roof structures, uh, which is medieval architecture, something we don't do anymore uh, today, um, how it responds to a fire situation. What are the areas where the heat is going to accumulate? Where is the timber going to burn? How fast are the flames going to spread? And so using the observations that were made by people around the building during the fire, we calibrate the model that we're having so that we can replicate the physics uh, uh, behind.